This snake right here has scales and they look very similar to pixels. You know what, I'm gonna say they are pixel perfect. Now, what if you're a front-end developer, you've been handed a Figma prototype and you want to create a pixel perfect or near pixel perfect representation of the design that's been given to you? Well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that. Now, just wait one second. We are about to embark on a little bit of front-end development knowledge. Now, if you're not very good with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So that's right, when you click the bottom link here, or the top link rather, in the YouTube description, you're going to get access to the front of developer career path, which actually includes parts of my UI design bootcamp as well, along with many other courses for a low monthly price. All right, so here we go. We have this little design, a little card design. And we're gonna try to get a near pixel perfect representation of this card, okay? So the first thing we want to do is uh, when you're translating these designs, you want to take and select the elements that you're you know you want to work with and hold alt around while hovering over different things. Um, these little orange labels with the white text inside that have numerical values are pixel values. So it means from the top of this container here to the very top of the design, it's 100 pixels, 100 pixels over here, and so on and so forth. Now when we also select a, a given element and we go to inspect property, there is a CSS section down here, um, but it's providing you with, with pixel values and it's positioning things with uh, position absolute. Also, if you select text elements, it's specifying the font size and pixel values. And for accessibility purposes, you want to avoid using pixels, especially for type, because I, if people have their settings, I, their their type settings, I, like may, may, changing them from the default of medium to like large or extra large, then if you have things that are specified in pixels, those won't respond. They'll stay the same size, so it becomes an accessibility issue. You want to use M or REM units. Um, and I'll show you how to do that conversion. So let's get started here with just trying to get this basic container um, in our front end development <clears throat> on the, the live browser version. So if we click on this, we'll see it provides us with position absolute. Now you wanna avoid using position absolute for the most part when it comes to structuring, you know, the main structure of your layout. Um, so we're, we're not gonna use this code right here. Um, but we can just take you know this stuff right here, like the box shadow and the border radius. I know it's probably hard for you to see. Um, and then I'm gonna come up to my code editor. I already have the HTML written out for that card and also the rule sets uh, that I'll need for the CSS portion. So for our card, um, I can just paste that in and I'll show you the preview here in the browser. We can just save it and there you go. Uh, this is what it looks like so far with the card. Now we wanna get that thing pushed away 100 pixels from the top and 100 pixels from the left to be consistent with the prototype. So to do that, we'll see it's 100 over here, 100 over here. You can get out your calculator. I'm gonna show you a plugin though that will automate this process. We take 100 and we divide it by 16. Why 16? Because essentially uh, the, the default font size of an HTML document, which is specified in the HTML property or the root, or not the property, the HTML selector or the root selector is a font size of 16 pixels. Why 16? Well, when it comes to M in rem units, one rem unit uh, is equivalent to 16 pixels or whatever that default font size has been set at because you can override it. So we take 100 divided by 16, we get 6.25 rem units. So what we do is, and by the way, I'm going to I'm going to specify our HTML property and put font size 16 pixels. We don't have to put this because that's what it is by default, uh, which is specified from the browser. But we're going to put it anyways, and I'll show you kind of how you know when we change this value, it also changes every, any other thing that's using like M or rem units. So for our card, we're going to do a margin of 6.25 rem units. And before I hit save, I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so it pushed it down. This should be, the amount of white space here for the top and left should be 100 pixels um, because it's based on 6.25. Multiply that by 16 and presumably you'll get 
100. So I next up, what about the white space inside of this container? All right, so we take a look at the elements inside. So we'll select the first one uh, at the top, and then we're gonna hold, uh, well, we don't have to hold Alt at this point. We can just hover over and we'll see it says 39 pixels from the top for, from the left. This element's 39 over here. This button, it's 39, 39. So basically it's 39 pixels of padding all around inside of that container. Um, and you could do your 39 divided by 16 manually, or you can get this plugin called Handover. There's a few other ones that do the same thing. Um, get it installed. We'll choose uh, Handover. And basically we can select elements. It will put this in, you hit convert, and it provides you with the rem units by default. You can also override the base pixel uh, by default though. It's at the browser default of 16. Um, so we know this is 39. We can just manually plug in uh, any of these numbers and just hit convert. And we get 2.44 uh, as, as the value. So what we'll do is we'll put in padding 2.44 M units. Now you might be wondering why I used M instead of rem. Generally speaking, um, and you can also do the same thing here. Generally speaking, for margin and padding, you can use M units, and for, for typography, you can use REM, although we can break those rules, and you'll see why. And you'll see the difference here in a second when we go forward. Um, you can see there's too much white space up here. Now, if you run into that issue, make sure you use your dev tools. You hit I, Control shift i to get that up in Chrome or Firefox, and we click this little selector thing here, and then we click, we hover over the element that might be affected. You can see the orange parts on the top, and that's simply your margin or padding that's been added. Um, so there's ex extra default margin that's been added to the top, which throws off the amount of white space up here. So we could take our H1 element, element and just put margin zero, and there you go, it solves the problem. So this should be 39 uh, pixels from the top and from the left so far. All right, so also what about the font size of our H1 element? We can't assume it's the same. So we uh, cl click on this, kick convert, it's 28 pixels, which is 1.75 rem units. So we're gonna type in font size, 1.75 rem units. And before I hit save, we'll see if anything changes. Yep, it's a little bit smaller. And then also, what about the amount of white space beneath it? compared to the element beneath it, which happens to be a paragraph. Well, come over here, hover over there, and it says 26, not sure if you can see that. There's a distance of 26. So if we type in 26 here, hit convert, that's a 1.63 rem unit. Now, let me show you something very important. If I do a margin, um, we'll just do zero, zero, so top right, and then the bottom will be the next value. If we do a margin of three point, well, you have 1.63 rem units, and I come over here just so I can show you this. We're gonna get the exact value. Now remember I said generally speaking, uh, people use, uh, instead of rem units, they might use m units for margin. Well, what, watch what happens when we remove that r. It extends it much more. Why is that? Well, it's because if you use m units, it's gonna be relative based on the font size property uh, of the current selector or a selector that it's nested within. Um, so what's happening is what when you use M units, let me get out the calculator, it'll take 1.75 times 16, which is what's happening right here in this font size property, which is 28. And then this will take 1.63, uh, it will take that 20, 28 times 1.63 and give us a value of 45, and that's too much. That's that's 45 here. Um, so you can use rem units uh, if you have a font size property that's being overwritten, um, or you can do some extra math to figure out uh, what the m unit representation of this would be based on this font size, if that makes any sense. But for me, I'm just gonna leave that here um, at the, the rem uh, value. So now we have, next up is going to be our, yeah, our, our, our button. So let's go ahead, we'll select that element. Um, it gives us the background and already and the border radius. Again, you can do the conversions to get the, the M and Ren units and all that stuff. 
um, if you wish. Um, oh, you know what? Let's just paste that in. I forgot the paragraph element. We gotta get that done first. Um, so we're gonna select a paragraph and we wanna make sure when you have like paragraphs or multi-lines that you also use the, the line height that's been specified. So if we hit convert, um, here's all our values. So our text is 1.31 rem, line height is 1.88, um, letter spacing is zero by default, we haven't changed that, so on and so forth. So now what we'll do is we'll come in, we're gonna specify a font size of 1.31 rem, a, a line height of 1.88, rem and we also want to get the margin bottom so by the way this next part is very important i uh, notice it says 49 notice how there's a little bit of a uh, space here like if we drag that up it's going to change this to 57 we want that space there and the way we get that correct space there it's accounting for the line height all right so if we come over here and we click this button it's going to give this the line height um, otherwise, you won't have a pixel perfect representation. So it's 49. To get that conversion, we just put 49 here, hit convert, and we get 3.06. So um, for a paragraph, we'll put in margin 00, zero and then let's, what was that? 3.06 rem units. Now let's save. This is what we have so far. And let's get that button styled up. I know the color is going to be white. Font white will be bold. Text decoration will be none. All right, and now we need to get the padding. So the padding and the font size. So if we convert, the font size is uh, 1.331. So let's get that in there. All right, and then also we come in here. It's gonna be, if you hold Alt, it's gonna be 19 at the top and bottom and 28 on the left and right. So I've put 19, 28, Hit convert, those are our two values for the top and bottom of the padding value. So padding is gonna be, um, let's see, yeah, 1.19 rem and 1.75 rem here. All right, so something isn't aligning up quite correctly and I, I, could, see, I could just tell that right off the bat simply because there's not a lot of white space here. So if we look at our card element, we wanna make sure that, you know, not padding top and just padding left has been added. Um, you can see it says 2.44 M units. Um, let's see what the issue could be here. So if I hit Control Shift I, we get our dev tools. We could see there's an issue occurring here where uh, there's an overflow occurring. So if I expand this out, I wanna see what's happening. Okay, so first of all, let's assume, just based on this design, we have this big open space here, we wanna have the same width. All right, so if we give it a width, um, let's hit convert. It says 25 rem units based on 400 pixels width. So let's see what happens when we do that. So if we take our card and we do width, 25 rem units, come back here, and we save it, okay. And I realized I forgot, when it comes to styling uh, links here, like eight elements, um, we need to put display either block or inline block. So if we do inline block, now it's going to add uh, and pay attention to any type of margin and padding and stuff. So this should be a really close representation of what we have, although it's not quite exactly the same. Um, I believe one of the issues I uh, is the width of this right here. I'm gonna see if I can fix that uh, because you can see it's clearly longer. If we look at the words like AC, Gravita or whatever, <laughs> uh, it, it's just too long, this whole portion. And I think that's because it's calculating in the padding um, and on top of the width. So if we do a property, let's see if this works. Um, we'll do up here, we're gonna just do all box sizing, border box, there we go. All right, so that basically just overrides like anything with uh, width and padding and margin. It's not, it's, it's gonna subtract the, the margin and padding from um, the width values. So now uh, it, looks, it's, it looks like it's almost exactly the same. Notice if we hover over here, it says 38. So if we get this one pixel over, I think now it's gonna be pretty much pixel perfect. 
for at least from here, this standpoint. Now we can't know if this is pixel perfect yet. Um, one way we can know is if uh, we, we take a screenshot of both of them and we put them side and we overlay them um, on top of each other. So right now we're zoomed up 100% here. Let's zoom back out to 100% there. Let's close this up. We can eyeball it and, I, and I'll show you in a second if this looks, this looks to, to me, of course the text is rendering slightly differently um, compared to the, you know, um, to the browser version, but let's see how close they are. Let's overlay them with a little bit of opacity. So I'm gonna hit uh, print screen. I think the first one will just make, oh, I don't want to make sure that's outlined. Um, right now I'm, I'm, I'm using a tool to, to screenshot that specific area. I'm not sure if it shows up um, when I'm recording, but nonetheless, here it is. And then we'll take the browser and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy this. And then we're going to overlay that there. Now what I'll do is put this like 50%. So the top one is the one I'm selecting and that's the browser version. And as you can see, it is nearly pixel perfect. There's a little bit of blur, which means things are slightly different, um, like around here. But this is pretty much pixel perfect based on, um, if I move these around, see if I can get them closer. Yeah, based on, it, it seems like there's only a very minute, slight difference uh, in terms of how this is aligned and positioned. Oh, and also one more final important thing I wanted to mention is responsiveness. So the reason we're using uh, M and REM units for most of our elements uh, is because if we wanna create a, um, a media query, um, so let's just do a media only screen uh, and min width, let's do like 1200 pixels. So anything inside of here, meaning uh, once this browser is beyond 1200 pixels, it's gonna activate any rule sets that are specified within here. Um, and let's say we wanna override the font size property of the body. So let's do 20 pixels. By default, like I said, up here it's 16. If we save this, nothing happens, but that's because this is less than 1200 pixels. If we expand this out to something larger, watch what happens. Everything increases by default. If we were using pixel values, uh, this really wouldn't be behaving like this. And so that's that's one of the benefits of using the M and REM units is because we can create a design that's responsive where everything scales up. So this is more distance from here and here compared to the distance that's now from here and here. And we can really exaggerate this by changing this really small, like maybe 10 pixels. So if we go here, it's gonna do the opposite. So hopefully you can see the value in that. All right, so hopefully you found that interesting. If you have other work pro workflows and processes that you use that maybe that you think I uh, could be added or even changed from what I do, let me know in the comments. Give a like, give a subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all soon, goodbye.